Still Jesus four? fucking Christ. We can't do anything right, can we? We were so close, man. Can we do one fucking thing, huh? We were one fucking thing right on time. We were so close. But you know what? Four minutes is still within the, the margin of error. Like, if you are if you say you're going to show up someplace and you show up 15 minutes late, I think even 15 minutes is within the margin of error. Uh, hey, everybody. Welcome to our makeup stream. Yesterday was Mother's Day, and so I was busy cleaning the house. Fucking mothers. Doing Am all I the right? dishes. Am I right? Cooking all the meals. Tending to my children. That's usually, like, Lisa and I's big thing for both Mother's Day and Father's Day is just like, hey, guess what? Uh, this is the day that you leave me the fuck alone. I'm just going to do whatever I want to do. <laughs> is that, was that what happened? Just leave me the fuck alone? That was no, the, the no. plan? We, we, had, we, we grilled out. We had uh, my mom over, Lisa's mom over, Lisa's sister over, who is also a mother. I cooked. I cleaned, which I really usually do anyway, but... Uh, it was just a nice night. And then, you know, as it got towards the end of the night, I was like, so, yeah, what do you think? Should I stream tonight? She's like, how about you stay here and we play board games? And I said, okay. That's what she wanted okay. to do for Mother's Day. We played board games. Okay. It was great. It was great. Oh, so uh, we will be spoiling the fuck out of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 for the whole stream. Yeah. The whole stream, Rich and I will unrestrained talk about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. So uh, if if you care about those spoilers, leave now. Before we do that, though, I do want to tell a bit of a story. You go ahead and do that. I'm trying to get tips to load because we're going to need it. Yeah. And it's not loading. It says it's loading. Okay. Seems like it's taking it a while. I'll press X and try again. Did you do that already? I'm wondering if I'm having some kind of internet issues. I don't know. I don't know. Not connected. Evening. Good evening. Okay, so while Rich is trying to connect to tips... Uh, as I was thinking about, uh, so I'm playing, uh, Zelda Oracle of Seasons off of my Game Boy Advanced reader that is currently hooked up to my GameCube. I have a beautiful purple GameCube right in front of me as you see my GameCube controller. Great. And out of the back of my GameCube, there are actually two AV outlets. One is just the standard, uh, composite AV which uh, you'll remember for, like from your... Uh, it's, it's actually the same out that the N64 and the Super Nintendo had. I thought it was the same out that the Wii had. It's I not. I don't know if the Wii had the standard def outlet. The Wii was a standard def system. Oh, but I thought it was a, I thought it had a different... I guess it could have been the same. I think it was the same. The rectangle with a little divot? Yeah. Maybe. I don't remember. Because I bought a special cord, a rectangle with a divot, that even though the Wii wasn't an HD system, it... Mm -hmm. And I'll put it in the, the red, green, blue sure, style. Sure, the, co the, the component. component. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the this has a component out, but it's a special component out. And uh, this system is a 480i, 480 yeah. interlaced system. And you can get the component out that turns it into 480p, which is literally twice the resolution. Like, once you start hitting progressive, yeah. it's no longer interlaced. You can get a super crisp image out of your GameCube. Okay. And so I was like, oh, you know what? I bet there's a million of these cords out. I'm going to head over to Amazon or eBay and see if I can find one of these GameCube uh, component outs. Yeah. First, I go to Amazon because, like, eh, maybe Amazon has it. On Amazon, $300. That's a lot of money for a GameCube. No, cord. just a cord. cord. Just Break a cord. GameCube cord. Okay, so I go, all right, we'll head over to eBay. I bet there's a Chinese knockoff. eBay, the cheapest I could find it was $280. <laughs> right? What it is, My is this It's is this incredibly specialized cord that has a up processor built into the cable with Nintendo proprietary hardware inside of it. Jack. Yeah. You you do not like piracy. We know this. I do not like piracy. You you then presumably own your your GameCube discs, right? I have. I'm I'm playing uh, all the stuff on the stuff that I own. There is a uh, there's a piece of software that will emulate your GameCube. Yes. I believe it's called the Dol Dolphin. Okay. Yeah. You can you can install that emulator. Yeah. And then it's not piracy because you put your disc that you own and bought and paid for, and it's a physical item that you own. And you can put that in there, Still a and it will play a, it from the disc. Uh, one, my computer doesn't have a disc drive, but I could always buy a disc drive. You, you could. 
Um, my computer, my, my nice gaming PC does not have a disk drive because I didn't think I would need one. And you could always, you know, get a USB one or whatever. That to me is a piracy gray area. It is not at all a piracy. These, you, the it, games were you're intended not, to you're be not played stealing, on the system. You're not stealing any software. Right. You're stealing zero software. You're stealing zero software. You're stealing a hardware. You're not stealing hardware. You're stealing hardware. You're not you're, stealing hardware. You're playing it on something that it was not intended no, to be it, played it's on. it's an emulation of that hardware. Right. The hardware that you didn't play, pay for. So you steal the hardware. Uh, I am saying this is a morally great. Did you pay area. for your computer? I did not pay Nintendo for my computer. So what? That's that's where it turns into a morally gray area for me. You sound like my sister. <laughs> hey now, wait is that is that an insult or is that a compliment? <laughs> the hardware that you own, right? And uh, that's where it turns into gray area. Because if I own the game and I own a GameCube, is it really piracy? I. I'm taking the stance that it still technically is. No, it is not in any way, shape, or form by by any definition, except for your own peculiar crazy one. It first of all, it very much is. You are justifying the piracy by saying, "Well, I own this." And no, I own this. it's not. We just had this. You're emulating the hardware. You are. Yes, you are emulating the hardware. There is hardware. nothing. There is nothing illegal about that. You are emulating the hard for hardware that you did not. There pay is for. zero things illegal about emulating the hardware. What? No, no, no. I'm not saying about illegal. It's a moral issue. You are not paying for the hardware that you should pay for. So you're buying the games. Yeah. Which Nintendo wants you to buy because they make money off the games. Yeah. And you think they're going to be upset because well, you didn't buy the hardware, which is a loss leader, so you will buy the games. No, well, Nintendo never loses on their hardware. Okay. Nintendo has, by the way, <laughs> you can't use that argument with Nintendo. You can use that for Xbox. Oh, no. And by the way, I know, like... This is all semantics because, like, I bought my GameCube uh, from a second-hand dealership, which Nintendo isn't making any money off of, and I got my games from a second-hand dealership, which, which Nintendo isn't making money. It's you know what, you know what, Jack? Huh. You're right. This simple, easy solution that is 100% legal, it's morally gray. You it's, know what? It's you go gray. out yeah. and you buy a $300 cord, so you can play the games <laughs> on your actual GameCube, Jack. But it's the right thing to do. You go out and do that right now. By the way, no, I don't. And even... tell your go go home and tell your wife that yeah. you know what. Even though there's absolutely nothing illegal about it, I did not <laughs> like the idea of downloading this free software. <laughs> so I went to the store and bought a three hundred dollar cable. First of all, I would never. Even if I bought it, I would never tell her I bought it, because oh, that's a fight waiting to happen. But. <laughs> Here we had to restart. I did. Uh, oh, sure. Mm. I'll never remember what it is. I I know you told me a few times. I've told you a few times. <laughs> Give me a second here, guys. Uh, no, no. And by the way, you don't need the cable. Like I can play. Like we're playing this on the TV right now without a cable. Here you go. Right. Uh, you don't need the cable to play. It just gives you a, a slightly more crisp image. It was just funny. <laughs> like you would get playing on the dolphin emulator. Like you would get, like, it was, it'd be like a more crisp image <laughs> Actually, like you, you might, would get. You might be able to find some, like, user-made mods that, like, you know, up the resolution on oh, textures. Oh, I'm sure. No, and I'm sure, like, I could actually take my old controller. I bet they have a GameCube 2 USB adapter, so I could use this. They almost certainly do. As a USB. Con I know, I'm sure, like, by the way, I'm not arguing that it would be a lovely experience. It would be a lovely experience, right? <laughs> Uh, it's it's just to you know I'm I, I take kind of a hard line stance here, and uh, and I gotta stick with that because once because once you start making exceptions you can keep on making exceptions all the way down so I I take my hard line stance and I take it pretty seriously. So if you start with this with this you know minor exception you're gonna build up to like full blown piracy is that what you're saying? Well once once you start do saying you, do you support the legalization of pot? Say it again? Because uh, you know you're saying you're saying that the dolphin yeah. with your own disc that you own is a gateway drug. 
yeah. for piracy. Absolutely. Do you support the legalization of marijuana? Not only that, I support the legalization of every drug. That's a gateway drug, Jack. I you su- start doing pot, you're going to end up doing the crack cocaine. I support the legalization and the heroines. of every drug. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Make it all legal. Let people pay for it, uh, even though they're going to do You can't stop people from doing stupid stuff. Jack support? No, I do not support jaywalking. I go to every fucking crosswalk every time, even if it's out of my way, because I am a stickler for that shit. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a square, Rich. You know that I'm a square. <laughs> I am a giant square. <laughs> your your Lisa, head is clearly round. Lisa, <laughs> Lisa yells at me constantly because she will just want to cross the street and jaywalk, and I will say, "We wait. <laughs> we are going to the lights, and we are using that goddamn crosswalk. Those are the rules." Those are the rules. <laughs> All right. um, okay, so by the way. The Atomic Mouse Trap says, yes. this, is on, this is on target here. On target. Stay on target. The Retron 5 is a third company piece of hardware yeah. that can play physical NES games. Right. Is that piracy? The, you wanted to own one once upon a time, I believe. You talked we looked about into, that. We looked into the Retron 5, and here's what I will say about uh, they they actually made third party NES consoles later. Yeah. Because the copyright for the hard for the hardware had run out. So like there is there is a a world in which NES emulation is perfectly legal and acceptable. Okay. Uh, like I said, there's a there's a moral area that I'm taking. Uh, Jack. I think the Retron Five is morally great. It could I be. think that's as good as piracy. I don't have it, so it could Nintendo's be. Nintendo's not getting the money for that hardware. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you're, you're stealing that hardware. I don't have it's a knock off. It's knockoff hardware. I don't own a Retron, Rich. This is moot, as I do not own. Oh, look at this. Classic. I don't know what I have to do. I'll tell you that. Did you just start? Is this a new game? No, this is not a new game. Do you want to start a new game, do you think? No, you do. Yeah, you can play from here. I don't think it really matters. I'm not. I'm not terribly far. Like I just. I, we don't. You know. Maybe. Maybe people want to. You know what? Yeah. Let's just. Okay. Start if you're not game. far, then fuck it. Let's just start a new game here. Anonymous says, "Hello, Jack and Rich." Hi, Anonymous. Question. How do we get out of here? What? If I already own a pair of Nike shoes. Oh, what? Is it okay if I steal another pair, or is it okay if I buy a knockoff pair of Nike made illegally? Thanks. Well, this isn't the same thing as stealing a pair of Nikes. For one, we're talking about using the discs, which is like saying, can I use my Nike shoes on my hands if I want, but the shoes I already own? Can I do something, you know? Mm, not really. Your analogy is bad because Jack would still be using his shoes. He's not replacing his shoes with an artificial pair of shoes or a stolen pair of shoes. Jack would be using his shoes. Yeah. Wait. There we go. Uh, yeah, that's that's kind of tricky. There we go. Okay, we're gonna start a new game. New game. Yeah. And you know what? Because I'm a super square, I usually go Link. That's what I usually do. You know, I do the same fucking thing. You know, it's fine. It's all fine. That's all fine. All right, let's start this. This is a brand new game, Oracle of Seasons. This takes place um, when chronologically. I think this takes place after Ocarina, chronologically. Uh-huh. As far as the great Zelda timeline is concerned. So you're already the hero, and Z- and, and Zelda... Wait, which, which hero are you? You're the hero of time. You're the hero of time in this? Yes. Chat? Chat. After Ocarina. Yeah, you're the hero of time. Someone's saying it's after Link's Awakening. I don't know. Or maybe you're another new Link. There's always a new Link. I. No, no. You they, know what? I I so don't care about that. This is. They talk about like Zelda. Like Zelda. Like sent at me here to protect this person from Ganon. Ganon's not the bad guy. Oh, here we go. You don't care. Yeah, I know you don't care about the chronologic, uh, the the yeah the uh, high rule. Oh yeah. Every link is different. That is not true. That is not true. Like, Majora's Mask is one that is most definitely the link from Oot. 
the uh, the Phantom Hourglass link is the same. This as is most Wind Waker. definitely the same link as Wind Waker. Yeah. There's a couple other ones too where they're the same link. Like oh, uh, wait, aren't you the same link in in Link Two, Link's Adventure? Uh, well, that could be some kind of weird translation thing. I think you're supposed to be, though. That just could be what they, what, the, how they translated it for America, you know? Sure. But I think you're supposed to be the same, Link. I have the timeline book right here. Yeah, figure out who I... Ah, look at this, look at this group of gypsies here. I am, oh, look, hey, here's Impa. Here's Impa, the troops cook. Link, I see. Din, the dancing girl found you, collapsed in the woods. She's cared for you through your nightmares. Sweet ass Din. So what is what is what is the background on this game? Well, this is it right here. I don't mean in game, I mean in real life. What do you this mean? This wasn't made by Nintendo. Uh, well, it's not it, you know, obviously produced by Nintendo, developed by Capcom. Yeah. This is a Nintendo Capcom collaboration, and they're fantastic games. And, and this game came out simultaneously with Oracle of Ages, which are two very different games that you can then use the link cable to, like, link together. Yeah. Because this was, like, when the Game Boy Color introduced the link cable where you could, like, Wait, do shit with it. Something happened with the video. We are cut off horribly. Go to the... Cut off go to Oobs. Who is... We are not at all perfect. Wait, no, we're pretty close. Oh, wait, I think I did something. Whoa! We're pretty close. You got some hearts missing, but, I mean, you guys know what the hearts are. You know... Okay, I'll fix they're, it. They're freaking anal retentive. I'll, we'll, I'll fix we'll, it. We'll resize it. I'll fix it. <laughs> so this is Oracle of Seasons. This is Oracle of Seasons. The other one is Oracle of Ages. Correct. You are correct, Rich. And there was a special thing where you could link... Oh. oh I want to... There we go. Change the size of it. Yeah, right? Yeah, I get a little black. You know, that's, you got a little black. It's fine. It's close enough. It's freaking, it's freaking close enough. There. That's pretty good. How, okay. Now you guys can see all the things we see. I hope you're happy. All right, you know, we're not going to get to these chip tips for a while. <laughs> Why? What are they saying? I don't know. I'm just like, I keep hearing it ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, okay, ding, ding, perfect. Ding, ding. There we go. Which pixel is the game? Hold on. S snap. Oh, snap. Classic. Oh, Din has been caring for you. Look at, look at how they set up. It could, uh, uh, spoiler alert. Din's about to get straight up kidnapped. But first, you know what we got to do? Do a little bump and grind. There we go. There ain't nothing wrong with a little bump and grind. Anyway, we know that there's the two games, Oracle and Seasons. Yeah. You know, originally it was supposed to be a third. No, I it didn't. wasn't. It wasn't gonna be. It wasn't gonna be Oracles and Ages. It was gonna be Courage, Wisdom, and Power. Oh, that's a fun idea. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, like the the Ages and the Season thing. I remember you complaining a lot about uh, Ocarina and how they didn't have many time puzzles. Yeah, it's like, what's the, what's, you know, why, why, you know, I got that gimmick and then you don't really use it. There's one dungeon where they kind of use it. That's right. it. But in ages and season, you actually have to use the changing of the seasons and the ages for puzzles. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, so there, there is like, you know, it makes sense, uh, the names. Okay. And I want to say Din here. Oh, they're, they're going to tell us in a second. That's why we started a new game. Din is... A... Wait, why can't I dance with you, Din? I, th I think I'm supposed to dance with you. Don't be shy. Dancing will be fun. Okay, oh, here we go. Look. Oh, look at Din. Grrr. <laughs> and look at Link, that lame-o. <laughs> I will dance with you. Totally a white guy. <laughs> uh, uh, what do I do? What do I do? It's great. Doobie Sandwich says, Doobie Sandwich! Thanks for the shout-out from last stream, albeit I wasn't there and was a goof. Say, Rich, 
Now that you pre-bought Vanquish on PC, do you still plan to get rid of your PS3? Oh. LOL. Well. Cough. Fuck. What's it? Fuck my flu, sad face. Oh, oh. his name has the flu. He has the flu. I'm yeah. sorry about that. That, is, that. You've said that in the past, that you are only holding on to your <laughs> PS3 for Vanquish. It's a, it's, it was only, you know what? It, it, it was only a, it's an exaggeration, but only a slight one. Okay. It's like, my reasons to have a PS3, though, are definitely dwindling. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, there was uh, Vanquish, there's the Arkham games. Mm -hmm. Those are all going to be on PC now. Yeah, yeah. Still got the Ninja Gaiden games. I like oh. Ninja Gaiden Sigma, Ninja Gaiden 2 Sigma. Sure. So, that, you know, those probably won't ever be on PC. So I got that, and I got... Um, from software's uh, 3D dot heroes. Oh right, right. That was PS3. Okay. So, so I'll keep my. I'm gonna keep my PS3 around. Having it having it hooked up at all times will not be a priority though. <laughs> it it is now because of Vanquish. It has gone down a peg. It's gone down a, a major <laughs> peg. <laughs> Ooh, you cannot escape Onyx, General of Darkness, Rich. That's who we're fighting here. Onyx, the General of Darkness. I love it. Oh, and it has a Blu-ray player, if you don't have a standalone Blu-ray player. Is that true with the PS3? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's nice. That's nice. When, I don't know. I don't, I don't ever use Blu-rays, though. You have the option, though. Yeah. Which is nice. Yeah. Ah, Din! I think I eventually got a... Um... Blu-ray drive for the PC, I believe. Oh, okay. So. Oh, well, then never mind. Uh, is Jack ever going to finish Nier? Nope. Don't care about it. I got, I have nothing against Nier, for crying out loud. There's just not enough time to play all of the games in known existence. You know what? I do. I, it didn't hook me. We played a few hours, and it didn't hook me. There are games that we have played on stream for the first time, and I go, ooh, I want to get into that a little bit more, and Nier didn't do it. Chet, you never saw my reaction to hearing Vanquish was on PC now because I heard about it off stream. Yes, and and Rich knows I about I was it. happy, though. People are still tweeting at me. <laughs> they're not tweeting at Prerec, Rich. They're tweeting at me to tell you. <laughs> this is why I don't have a Twitter. <laughs> you know what? I don't need to be... I don't need to get, like, 150 tweets about this. You can get 150 tweets, yeah. and I just I hear about the yeah. news I need to hear about. Yeah, you're it's welcome. It's very convenient. You're welcome. I'll be your shield, okay? <laughs> God damn <laughs> Gosh darn it. Dots85 says, hey, you fucks. Hi. I got Prey, and it's just like Rocket League and totally not exactly like Bioshock. I never had anything against Bioshock. I know you're trying to get me to play Prey. Bioshock was fine. Yeah, Bioshock was a fine game. I just don't have time for Prey. Also, Rich, you mispronounce Wolfenstein. The O is short. Like, Okarana. I don't even remember anymore. I, I don't even remember anymore. Yeah. Okarana, Okarina, Ocarina. Oh, there you go. Okanukinawa. So is it supposed to be, Ut, is it supposed to be time. Wolfenstein? Wolfenstein. I think it's Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein. Ooh, better. Okay, so Onyx. Not, it says, not like room. So, Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein? Uh, if it's supposed to be like Ocarina, Wolfenstein. It's Wolfenstein. 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 Wolfenstein was awesome. That was... That was my favorite birthday gift because it came out of nowhere. I had no idea it existed. Oh. You know, my dad gave me a copy of freaking Wolfenstein 3D. And I was like, oh my God, it's like it's me. Oh! I'm, I'm holding the gun. <laughs> what? <laughs> and yes, you could strafe. <laughs> oh yeah, Luftenstein is tough to get your head around. I am, I am, I am 90% sure there was a strafe key you would hold on to could strafe. Be. I'll tell you, now that I've gotten used to it, uh, I can kick some fucking ass in Luftenstein. <laughs> the boss would have been freaking impossible in that game if you couldn't. Right. Okay, here, here's the backstory. Uh, this is uh, Impa, the nurse of Hyrule's Princess Zelda. And Din's no dancer either. She is actually the Oracle of Seasons! 
who wields control over the forces of nature. Zelda has mystical powers that told of a curtain of shadow drawing around Din. I was instructed to take her to High Rule in secret. Zelda gave me this quest, but oh, I've been wounded. Ah, no. I won't be able to travel for some uh, time. Ah, Link. I know not why you were lying in the woods, but you and Din were fated to meet if the triangle on your left hand is real then you may be the hero who will save the world. What? So I believe this is in the time... If, if you go through the stupid Zelda timeline. Uh-huh. One of the timelines is at the end of Ocarina. <laughs> Zelda sends Kid Link back in time to warn of Ganon. Uh-huh. And so technically you didn't do any of the hero shit in this timeline because you warned everyone of Ganon, so you didn't get to go on an adventure. And so this happens afterwards. I think that's this timeline. Please use your power to aid Din. Please take my message to the Meku tree of Holron village. The Meku tree is the guardian of all Holodrum. Surely he can help. Oh my god. It's probably linking to the timeline, which I'm not going to look at because I so don't give a fuck. I don't remember. Like, I know that timeline is awful. And I remember, like, way back in the day watching a video on that timeline. And they're like, and all the timeline theorists were wondering where this would fall until Nintendo announced a third timeline. And you're like, fuck it. Fuck it. It's just the dumbest thing. Right? You know, what if timeline now? I, oh, God. No, there's the. There's the. <sighs> There's the young Link gets sent back. The there... time travel allows for young Link timeline and old Link timeline. Those are the two you get. The third one is a made up. What if Link had died? Right. Which, I mean, technically speaking, if you played that game, Link probably died at some point. So so elegant and well thought out and beautiful. <laughs> oh, they knew what they were doing. Those, those Nintendo, those storytelling architects. Oh, it's like, and... For anyone who believes that, like, of course Nintendo didn't know what the fuck they were doing. Oh, he... <laughs> I fell down a hole. Fantasy and wondery and mystery and... Nope. Well, like, they didn't know what they were doing at no, first. No, in this timeline A, the sword is pulled in in timeline B, and then... Jesus fucking Christ. Like, of course they didn't know what they were doing at first, and then, like, them trying to shoehorn it all together. Eh, yeah. I mean, you have... It's in the fucking title. Any kind of inconsistencies you can throw away myth legend the yeah. details are lost to time <laughs> there you go there you go any kind of timeline issue you have you yep. have you wave the legend banner and it <laughs> doesn't matter pretty much by the way you don't way. need to do this silly fucking ultra nerdy timeline shit oh you know what here's the thing you don't need to do it it is kind of fun don't you think it's kind of fun and no at, well at some point it was fun right now it's convoluted the point where it's just eye rolling it's like you can't take it seriously you, it's too dumb right well, but it's like it's fun like it's like that fan theory that all the pixar movies take place in the same universe that's you're, a that's fun you're you're trying to to connect the, uh, the fucking universe that twilight princess takes in to the 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 universe that fucking wind waker takes place in right no those are in different timelines <laughs> oh no! Oh, Rich! <laughs> no, Rich, there's a different timeline. You see, they don't. The one existed when the kid went back, and the other existed when when the kid went back, and Zelda didn't have a hero of time. And because she didn't have a hero of time, actually, more evil came back later, and that's what caused the Great Flood because she sent the hero back, but Ganon came back because she failed as a ruler. But in Twilight, she sent the kid back, but the kid succeeded. But Ganon still came back uh, because evil never really goes away. So, rich! It's a well thought out timeline. You know, you know what the problem with the Zelda timeline is? What's that? It reeks of voodoo hide. 
Voodoo Hide. It reeks of Voodoo Hide. What does that mean? The, the Star Wars Darth Vader helmet was polished with voodoo hide. <laughs> that kind of obsessively filling in all of the deep. We need to. How does where do the Death Star plans come from? Like specifically, we need to. We haven't seen that story. It's 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 like that. Yes, I'm with you. And I can't stand it. And but like I agree that the fan base takes it too far. It can be fun. If you have fun with it, I, I you know I don't really care. exactly. I can't I can't take it seriously. This is all the timeline. I just can't. Agreed. I'm with you. All right. Where am I at? Where am I at? Just this guy, you know, says, I still might see Guardians in the theater. Please continue to argue about piracy for the next four hours. Instead of talking about Guardians you know, spoilers? We're, we're, we're going to start talking about it at some point. Jack's, Jack's into his game right now, so I'm going to hold off at, a little bit. After I get the sword and talk to the Meku tree, then then I think a lot of just battle stuff's going to happen. So Okay. Uh, but, you know, we can start talking about it anytime you want to, Rich. Because, I mean, I have some, uh, you know, I have some things to say about Guardians. I have some strong opinions on Guardians. But here's what I will say. Yeah. It's not a bad movie. I loved it. I know you did. I you, loved it. You texted me to say you loved it. It's not a bad movie. And, you know, if you want to see it in theater, it's probably a good place to see it. It's got big, bold visuals. You might like it if I you can, see it in the theater. I can name an issue or two, but it's far outbalanced by things I like. And see, me, it's the other way. Like, I can name a lot of things that I really like, but it's far outbalanced by things I have issues with. Okay. So... There, there is one problem I will identify. Okay, you want to get into it now? Let's, um, get, let's do it. Do you? Sure, why not? What else are we going to fucking talk about? Okay. Yeah, what, uh, what does it matter? All right. What does it matter? We're talking about it now then. Hey, guys. With Super Guardian spoilers now. So I, I, I loved it, mm -hmm. and you didn't. That's where we're at. <clears throat> and I didn't hate it. I just felt pretty <laughs> mad about it, leaning towards didn't kind of didn't my, like it. My problem with the first one. Mm-hmm. Whatever, what other, whatever other nitpicks I may have had about the first one, which I, I once again there were a lot of things I liked about the first one. Right, love, yeah. love the characters mostly. Oh yeah, good, great characters. characters. Agreed, agreed. Um, I hated the third act. Yeah, right. It was so dumb. Ah, we're gonna go in there. And we're gonna just, we're gonna shoot at him. You know, we're gonna, we're just, that's, that's what we're gonna do. It was just so dumb compared to the, the craziness and fun and adventure that came before. Right, and of course, not to derail you too much, but I really liked the dumb plan. Because that was very in character of Peter Quill. Ah, we'll just go in there and shoot at him. I, what I specifically hated was the the friendship is magic. Let's well, all was... let's all hold hands and be an anticlimactic and ending ending. On one hand, the power of friendship, yeah, but that you know what, the 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 cancer mother thing where he sees the mother holding out the hand almost makes that work. Eh. It it almost eh. adds it adds an extra layer to that ending, which is lame. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, it has a little, a little, a little, it adds a little something to a bad ending. Okay, all right. It's like, he's, okay, he's finally, he's finally about to deal with what happened to his mother. I, okay, okay. Eh. 12%, yeah, yeah, 12% of plan. Like, I, I, like, because if it was anyone else making the plan, it wouldn't make sense. But because it's Peter Quill... Who is essentially, you know, a giant man child? That would be his plan. I don't know. We all shoot at it and we crash the ship and we just we just work it out, man. That's that's so in character of Star Lord. So uh, that's why I couldn't I couldn't fault him for that plan. But Guardians too. There's a man who who spent his entire life running from things. Yeah. Not not facing what happened. Not anymore. It was, it was, you know, it was the one thing the ending of Guardians had going for it. End of Guardians one. Yeah. Guardians one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm with you. I, I'm, I like that. I like that. Anyway, Guardians two. Guardians two. <sighs> Basically, all of my complaints mm -hmm. are going to boil down. Well, not all of them. The vast majority of my complaints for Guardians two are going to boil down to the number one rule of good filmmaking which is show don't tell mm -hmm. 
this happened a ton in the first movie, and I just figured that's because they had a ton of characters to introduce and a whole new universe to introduce. Mm. But now that we're in the second movie and we're just supposed to deal with characterization, I, I realize it's just Gunn. It's just the way in which James Gunn makes film, which is he loves to tell you stuff instead of showing you stuff. I, I need an example. Okay, well, let's. you know what? We can start right at the beginning. Sure. After they defeat the interdimensional monster, okay. they are about to go meet the golden people. Yeah. And before they go meet the golden people, Peter has a little speech about the golden people. Mm -hmm. So, and and if, if you remember, he, he's like, he's like, so Rocket, we have to make sure we don't piss off these golden people because they're really uh, prideful and they'll, they'll uh, be really vindictful if we, if we uh, speak down to them. He gives a little backstory of the golden people. Yeah. Which is literally him telling us something instead of us just figuring out that they're vengeful or spiteful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So telling, not showing. That's, okay, that's okay. A, that is a small example. We'll, as we go throughout the film, I can give you many more examples. Um, I, I noticed no examples like that that would pull me out of the film. And <laughs> yeah, it, it just did for me. Okay. So if, so, you know, we can, we can go on, uh, we have, uh, we also have, like, if, if I'm going um, like, to... Is it any one thing, or is it just, like, a series of little things that you don't like? It's Well, it's a series of little things. So, basically, every single time we get to <clears throat> a tell-don't-show moment, or kind of a, a plot inconsistency that doesn't make a lot of sense... What that does is lessen the emotional impact and the characterial impact of the movie. And so it just, it, like I said, it's not bad. It just turns it into kind of a weak movie. You say it lessened emotional impact. I got plenty of emotional impact out of that movie, man. Right. And, and, and I didn't. Like, so let's, uh, so if, if we can take it a little chronological sure, into sure. the movie. So then we get to, you know, they, they go away from the gold people and, and Ego saves them from the gold people army, right? Yeah. And then it's not them discovering that Ego is Peter's father. It's Ego just going, hey, I'm your dad. Like, oh, like, you know, the characters didn't do anything to discover he's, that. Well, no, he's got a personality not unlike Peter. Right, right. Again. It, it fit. <laughs> Again, none of these things individually or, or specifically make it. It's when you add them all up together. Um, then we have the most egregious tell don't show, which is the entirety of Ego's backstory, which is literally given to us via PowerPoint okay. presentation. How the fuck else do you get Ego's backstory? Oh, well, listen, I'm I'm not saying I have a better idea. I'm saying he gave a monologue about his backstory with PowerPoint presentations. I I want you to do that. Sure. Without expository dialogue. Maybe. And you know what? I thought yeah. his backstory was interesting. I was like, "Oh, that's neat." I'm not saying it wasn't interesting. I'm saying I don't want I don't want a radio play when I watch a movie. I want to see stuff happening. Uh-huh. I want my vistas. No, it's not about vistas. So, so uh, a better way to do something like Ego's backstory, right? Like one, how much backstory do you need there? How Or how much can you dole out? A lot. It's a weird concept for most audiences. It is a weird concept. So you, you need a lot. So then instead of the monologue PowerPoint presentation dump, you pepper in his backstory through later scenes that maybe the characters can discover themselves. Because we have this whole subplot of, like, Gamora being uh, skeptical of Ego yeah. and the planet, right? What did Gamora do to uh, to figure stuff out about what was going on wrong with Ego's planet? I'll agree with you there. This, this, now, this is where we get to my only real issues yeah. with the movie. Uh, first one, I thought the third act was extremely weak. Second one? Yeah. I think the second act is a little weak. So we don't disagree on much, except for I also think the first act is weak. <laughs> oh, no, the first act, first act worked for me, man. Yeah. I loved it. Oh, yeah? Um, yeah, yeah. I, you, you needed to do more with with everyone on Ego's planet. Right. A lot of, lot of attention went to Yandu and Rocket, and I don't fault them for that. That was all good stuff. That was a great sequence, absolutely. But they needed to do something more with... Uh, 
Ego and Peter other than throwing the ball around. There needed that that seduction. There needed they he, they needed to do yeah. something to like start driving a wedge between him and his friends. Right? Like, do we, something. We needed, we needed that. Yeah, and it would have it would have helped if like Gamora were like doing some kind of investigation. That would have been nice. And then we get all those scenes of his backstory, and you know maybe some of them are good. Like oh, he went out and you know he sought new life, and, and you know she, maybe Gamora starts to you know doubt her suspicions, and then we kind of naturally learn about his backstory. Oh, but that throw the ball thing, by the way. Hey, so so you know, I didn't hate it. I just you, well, could, you need you need to do more than that. So but here's here's the thing. So one throwing a ball between a dad and a son is already the most cliched father-son moment ever, right? But do you remember when he was talking with Gamora in uh, in the jungle before he went to Ego's planet? Remind me specifically. He gave a speech about how sad he was that his dad wasn't around and wanting to throw the ball around with... Like, he mentioned specifically wanting to throw a ball around with his dad because other kids had dad. He gave a monologue about how sad he was as a kid. Okay. That is another example of telling the audience something instead of maybe a flashback. A flashback that could have showed us how sad he was. It was a speech in which it was a scene in which he gave a speech. A speech with a super cliched moment that was then uh shown to us like the cliched came true, right? Ugh. Uh it was the, anyway, sorry, that was just another example of a tell, don't show moment. This is, I, I think what we have here is a case of something bothering you that just didn't bother me. Oh, exactly. No, and I, like, again, I'm not saying it was a bad <clears throat> movie. It had a lot of fun moments. And, like, you know you know what moment I really loved? <laughs> uh, a, a situation in which Gunn did it super right. Yeah. So, like, Mantis is an em empathic character, yeah. right? And she, she creates this little bond with Drax, which is very funny. Uh, I really like their interaction. And there's this one moment where Drax is remembering his daughter. If you remember. Yeah, he's, yeah I remember he's, he's sitting with Mantis and he's remembering his daughter. And he never really mentions, like, my daughter is dead and I'm sad. He's just sad, yeah. right? And Mantis touches him and Mantis feels his sadness. And you know, nothing is spoken. Right. And then that's the moment where Mantis finally decides to help them. Mm -hmm. That's when she turns the corner, right? And, like, there's a lovely scene of showing the audience what is happening without having anyone give a monologue. And that just didn't happen a lot in the movie. Every every other major sequence that is a, a plot twist or turn, someone gives a monologue. I, I, I just know I watched the movie. Yeah. I loved it. And I don't remember that many show-not-tell monologues that annoyed me. Um, I just... Did not have that experience. So, like uh, uh, another classic example, like that the the Yondu rocket, that whole them and the Ravengers was great. Yeah, that was a super fun scene, right? But like afterwards, Yondu and Rocket have a monologue off about Rocket's characterization. Yondu yells at Rocket and and gives a bullet point of all of his character flaws and why he's doing that instead of us just figuring that out for ourselves. Um, we get a monologue at the fr at the front with Sylvester Stallone about uh, why Yondu is leaving the Ravengers, which we don't understand at all. Where did that even come from? Right? We get a monologue. Uh, uh, Ego has a monologue about all of his evil plans that ends in, and by the way, I killed your mom, which was one of the stupidest lines uttered in a Marvel movie. Why would he? Why would he tell Peter that? Why would he t tell Peter that? He, he doesn't... <sighs> there is no reason for him to tell Peter that. He He's probably more sure that Peter's going to come to his side of thinking. Why would you Why would you not want to be like Ego? It's in his <laughs> name. He is Ego. <laughs> uh, Touche. No, and like I, th like that sequence did have a, a little like... I, I, I think the problem there was just... His overconfidence, his ego. <laughs> Maybe. Well, of course, of course, you're gonna help me, you know, spread throughout the galaxy. Yeah. No. And you know, like that scene, that sequence did have a little bit of a like Peter's being hypnotized kind of vibe to it, but that was such a harsh turn, you know, where he's like, "We're gonna, we're gonna take over all the planets was... with the black goo," and Peter's like, "All right," and I'm gonna kill everyone and all your friends. Okay. And I killed your mom. What? 
That heel turn was was eye rolling to me. I thought it was great. Oh god. When he just he just doesn't say a word. He just fucking starts blowing ego full of holes. That was great. I couldn't enjoy it because I can't, all that was going on in my head is why did you just explain your evil plot to the one guy that can challenge you? Ego. He thought, of course, he's going to go along with me. Why wouldn't you want to be a god? <sighs> because he only spent two hours it, with him. It, you need more time. It come, You know why he did it? It was like exactly like at the end of the movie. It's like, if you kill me, you're going to be just like them. Why would you want that? But there that's was how, that's how ego thinks. But you know what? This was another problem I had with Guardians 1, which was that was a payoff that didn't have a proper setup. Like, Ego's ego wasn't really, like, he was kind of egotistical, but kind of just lighthearted and suave. It We never got to see a situation in which his ego got the best of him in a small manner to set up that moment that was the big payoff, right? That characterization was never explained. Oh, listen, Ronan the Accuser was not a good villain. I'm, I, I'm with you on that. Ronan the Accuser was super weak. But <clears throat> so I, many tell, don't right. show moments. And, and you know, I, I, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying that, like, anyone is wrong for liking the movie. It had a lot of good, it had a lot of good parts to it. It had a lot of good character parts to it. It was an interesting universe. But for me, all of those... Uh, tell don't show moments took me right out of it every single time and then there were like a lot of really dumb like one line fixes for for setups where like like the like rocket and yondu mm -hmm. they have to they have that super silly sequence where they make 700 space jumps and they have the goofy eyes yeah. and they go through the goofy eyes right and then Yandu's like, what are you doing, man? That was way too many jumps. And he's like, the way you were talking about Ego, I knew we had to get here super fast. It's just a silly scene where they have distorted faces. Right. But, but like, it served a purpose in the movie, and it was explained poorly. And that took me out of it. And it took me out of it because I was listening to too many speeches, so I wasn't fully invested what in was, the movie. What was the, the purpose place. it served? I saw that as just a silly little thing they did. To well, get, they, to they, a... they needed to get to Ego. Yeah. Right. They could have just went there. They didn't need to have the right 700 jumps. Exactly. I, I also did not. It, I, it's just a goofy thing. Also, I didn't care for the 700 jump. The, that visual like didn't do yeah. anything for me. No. Comically. But it didn't, so. it didn't ruin the movie for me either. <laughs> Oh, no. Like I said, these are all just little things that kept me out of the overall movie. Okay. These are all just little okay. things that kept me out of the overall movie. I just, maybe I think it's just James Gunn's particular comedic stylings, and I just don't care for it. Maybe that's what it is. Like the that whole, uh, do you remember uh, Nebula's backstory speech on the yeah. Ravager ship? Oh, another monologue. Back, another backstory monologue. Uh, my father tore me apart, and and now I will I will use all of my power to defeat my sister and my father because my childhood. Blah blah blah. And then that was immediately cut, uh, undercut with like a wise ass comment. That's so James Gunn, and I got so sick of it. Chat. Yeah. Never go see a Shakespearean play with Jack. I probably wouldn't. Never do ever do that. Why? You don't think I would like it, or you don't think they would like it? I just, probably just, wouldn't like just, it. Just don't. Oh, because the monologues. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I get it. Uh, oh. Uh, so what? So uh, is what you're saying? I'm saying Guardians Volume Two is fucking Shakespearean, Jack. So what you're That's saying what is saying. it belongs on a stage and not a movie? I get it. No, I get it. You're right, Rich. I agree. The visuals weren't that strong. It wasn't good visual storytelling. Oh, visual visuals. I, I love the look of the movie. I love the the, the kind of '70s '80s vibe that just oh, it's saturated in. The visuals were fine. No, the visuals were fine. But by the way. Shakespeare wrote for the stage. He did not write in a visual <laughs> medium. If you want to, like, if that's your... Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. This was a really good stage play. You, you idiots. What are you doing? What are you doing? I am I am fine to a dis disagree to disagree on all of this. Like oh, I said, yeah. I, I enjoyed it a lot more than the first one. Oh, yeah. See, and I, yeah. I, I, 
kind of want to see it again. Yeah. I don't, I don't I don't often go to see a movie in the theater twice. I'm tempted to see this again. Really? Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah, it just didn't do it for me. Like, the first one at least had some fresh new characters and some fresh new settings. Mantis! Oh, I love Mantis! No, and the Mantis and Drax thing was really uh, fun. And I would argue that Guardians 2 turned Yondu into a whole new character. This movie took yeah. two villains and made me look at them in an entirely new light. Nebula and Yondu. Uh, another, hey, here's another good thing about the movie. Yeah. I see people in the chat saying, I think Jack's digging his heels a little too hard into these minor nitpicks, but there were so many minor things that I could never get fully invested into the movie. And so I'm just trying to explain all of my minor nitpicks. Here's something I, I actually really enjoyed the Nebula Gamora thing. That was, a, that was again, another uh, visual storytelling done very correctly. Mm -hmm. Except for, of course, the Nebula monologue. <clears throat> but, you know... That, that thing where Nebula crashes onto Ego's planet and just starts violently ramming the spaceship through the cave because she's, you know, because she has that anger. And mm -hmm. even like, you know, even after she, she's failed because of her anger, Gamora's still the good one. She still saves her. And after she saves her, Nebula has Gamora finally. And she doesn't know what to do with herself. That was beautiful. That was a beautiful moment, and that's what started the nebula. Okay, fine. I guess I'll help you. That you know, that's what that's what changed the situation. A we get to see a visual representation of a character's point of view changing, and that's the good thing. Okay, this is something I've not seen anybody else point out. Yeah, I'd like I'd like to talk about how brilliant Karen can be. Mm -hmm. She noticed something that I just totally did not notice. I'm curious if anybody else did yeah when we got out of the theater karen was talking about how ego was cancer his sure his little sure. plan yeah to spread throughout the galaxy because yeah. you know cancer your body thinks cancer is your friend <laughs> well when, when cancer starts off it's just another cell in your it's body just cellular growth right and then it selfishly just spreads and spreads <laughs> and all cancer oh, cares about yeah. is spreading and until everything else is dead yeah, I like that. Ego just doesn't care about anything else. He selfishly wants to spread himself yeah. throughout the entire fucking universe. So at the end of that movie, Ego didn't just give his mother cancer. Peter Quill is literally beating the shit out of the cancer that killed his mother. Hmm. That's, a new, that's a good take, by the way. That's a really good take. That's a really good take. I wish I cared about any of it at the end of the movie. <laughs> I cared a great deal. When they when they started playing Fleetwood Mac at the end, the chain, yeah. I was so pumped. I was so into it. Um, oh, I just wasn't. I just wasn't. Like, you know, like if if you look at the other part of that ending, it's kind of there there's a, there's this whole like uh, biological father versus stepfather thing that's happening with Yondu and Ego, right? Mm -hmm. None of it was set up properly. But we get to this end where, where you know, like from from a protagonist standpoint, how that should have ended is Peter choosing the father who cared for him over the father that birthed him. Mm -hmm. But we don't get that. I, I I got that enough from his advice that kind of taught Peter how to properly use the power. That I don't fly the arrows with my head. <sighs> that whole thing. I that's what I got out of that. But at that point, Peter was already fighting ego. Like that should have been the character turn. Is is a Yondu versus ego situation in which Peter has to literally choose between his biological father. And his and his uh, adopted adoptive father, right? And then like that whole thing about Yandu and stealing the kids, and uh, like all of that was to me was ham fisted into the script. I, I thought none of it played well, and I can see everyone. I can see everyone in the chat disagreeing with me. And by the way. <laughs> By the way, I am not saying it is a bad movie. I am saying that I couldn't get into it 
because of all of these little minor things. Oh, wait, I see someone agrees with me. All right, that's great. <laughs> I. It's not that I want formulaic filmmaking. I want a visual filmmaker. I want someone to tell the stories through the actions and visuals. They say they say that a, uh, you know, this is this is like like uh, Stan uh, Stan Lee's Nuff said issues. Mm -hmm. A good comic book, you don't need any words. That's just bonus. That would put Stan Lee completely out of a fucking job, considering that his artist, the Marvel method, right. his artists were the ones writing that shit. Ex right. Stan Lee would just come along later and put fucking words in there. That was literally his job. <laughs> right. Right, but uh, later, you know, he also, I'm sure, wrote okay. the stories a little bit. But have you ever read any you know, of his You know, Ditko got plot credit. Plot credit on The Amazing Spider-Man. Oh, yeah? Because he was effectively writing the book. <laughs> then Stan Lee, uh, and I'm assuming this person's saying something like right. this. Well, you know what? Some words are nice. But this is what I'm saying. Jack wins a no prize. Uh, you know, I just, like like I said, it's, to me, there were, there were a bunch of really small moments, and I wasn't really into the humor. So it, it didn't gel for me. Right? It just didn't gel for me. Not a bad movie, but I had, That's fun. That's I had fun. so many nitpicks where I was like, ah. It's, it's, anyone can like whatever anyone wants to like. I don't give a shit. Exactly. Exactly. I'm just saying that I love that movie. And I can understand. I want to see it again. I, that, you know. I'm, I'm slightly surprised, but I understand that. Because I know we came out of the, the first Guardians feeling pretty similarly about it. Which is like, eh. Yeah, yeah. Pretty meh about it. Um... Yeah, you like this? You like this pale, pale white meat here? We'll get through this. We'll get through this tree here. <laughs> oh, Jack didn't like the humor. That explains everything. He's entitled to his opinion, even though he is so, so wrong. Ah. I, you know, I don't, I, here's, here's why, like, some of the humor played really well. Like, some of it was really fun. I, Every time that there, every time there was a swelling emotional moment undercut by a wise ass comment, you could see it coming a mile away. Mm -hmm. And so I, you can't. To me, I couldn't get into any of the that's, emotional moments. That's Guardians. That's good, right? And that's his style. And so what I'm saying is, like, that means I can't get into the emotional moment because I know that a joke is coming, and I know that the joke is coming, so I don't laugh at the joke. Yeah. So. What What does Rich think of the scenes with the Sovereign? I. I don't have anything particularly insightful to say other than I like the sovereign. I like the concept. I, I like that their, um, their, um, Starfleet was effectively like an arcade. Yeah, that was that fun. was neat. That was cute. Like everyone just gathered around the one that's left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a really fun scene. I agree. Which you know, I mean, this movie wants it to be the '80s, like '80s arcade. Everyone yeah, yeah. gathered around looking at the guy getting the high score. Mm. I mean, that was very deliberate. Yeah. I just thought it was neat. Yeah. That was neat. That was neat. No, and I I mean just that that whole sequence was really fun. The the whole like the whole Drax like just jumping out of the ship to use an a handgun to shoot the ship down. That was hilarious. That was great. Yeah. yeah. That was, and that was really fun. I heard somebody mention that they think Drax has a death wish. I think he said wants that. To, wants to be with his family. I think he said that explicitly in the first one. Did he? No. He, I don't think he said he wanted to die. I think he wanted, he wanted revenge. Well, it wasn't about. it's not about dying for him. He does not fear death. Sure. I think that was it in the first could, one. Where, where, you know. The speculation is that could be because he wants to be dead. Oh, sure. Well, you know what? Maybe we could get a more Drax-focused movie. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And do oh, I, I can't wait. For, I'm all on board for volume three at this point. Mm. And I'm like there, there was a bunch of like, there's a bunch of like little stuff. Like I said, a bunch of little stuff. Like, like for example, in in that first sequence when they're going through the asteroid field, mm -hmm. we start to set up some of the conflicts that will hopefully be resolved through the movies, right? Yeah. One of those conflicts is the team not working well together. We can only assume this takes place relatively soon after the first movie, and Peter and Rocket have their little disagreement, right, about who's going to fly the ship. And that causes them to crash. Personal conflict causes something bad to happen. Hopefully that will be resolved through the movie. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really. <laughs> like nothing ever really comes from that. Like they never they never do anything yeah. to resolve yeah. the tension. I'll agree. That that little bit didn't really go other unless you want to frame that as just 
raccoon being a jerk to people and shoving people away. They're trying to illustrate that. But right, sure. And so then Gamora's that... little speech afterwards does undercut it if that was the angle they were taking. I don't know. Like, but... I don't know. And so it's like, but then it's like, so then the raccoon turned into less of a jerk because he got a speech from Mandu? Like, they didn't do, you know, they didn't do anything to resolve it. Is It was, was the... Oh, that's why he repeated it. Go to the giant route near the lake up north. Okay, I need to go to the giant route to the lake up north. Didn't have a real path. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I'm I'm sure there's more. As as we talk more and more about Guardians too, there's there's just a ton of little. There's some minor payoff to the rocket story at the funeral scene in the end. Yandu was like him, but. Even though, even though Yandu thought he had driven his friends away, well, he really didn't. Hope, hope. So there's a little, there's a minor payoff to that. No, there was. And all I, all I was thinking of during that, during that was like, so he gets kicked out of the Ravagers. Yandu gets kicked out of the Ravagers. Yeah. For, uh, for stealing children. Yes. And the Ravager, and the Ravager said, "Get out of here! You're still children." We don't find that out till later, even though that happened. That happened at the beginning, and I was really confused as to why he was getting kicked out of the Ravagers. Mm -hmm. But at the end, we figure out that it's because he stole children. He's, they said that line during the beginning. You might have, you might have missed it, but they, he, you, you, you sold children or something like that. Oh, sure, sure, but like I didn't understand, like because again, obviously, selling children I, was against their rules. I get that. <laughs> But we were hopping in the middle of a conversation without proper setup. Like, what? Wait, he stole chill. Well, yeah, is that, is it just we about know, Peter? We know he did that with Peter Quill in the first right, one. Right, and I'm just saying, like, oh, is this just about Star-Lord? Or what is that it? That was 100% set up ahead of oh, time. No, I, no, no, he came out of nowhere. It came from the first movie. He stole one kid. He gets kicked out for stealing one kid <laughs> who ended up saving the galaxy. You're welcome. Right? So, okay, so he gets kicked out for stealing children. Right? Uh-huh. And then at the end, he he helps defeat Ego, saving a lot of planets in the galaxy. And and so the like he they told the Ravagers this, right? And they we assume like that's why the Ravagers came to give him the special funeral. Like, hey, he helped save the galaxy. Yeah. But like the Ravagers trust them? Like, why would we believe you assholes? He's always sticking up for you. Like, like just the whole Ravagers organization's trust a raccoon to, like, to be like, oh, yeah, you're right. And he's a good guy. Let's give him the full-on funeral. I think it was more like even though he was ostracized, they still cared about him. This is what I took away from that. Yeah. There's going to be a funeral for him no matter what. We needed, we needed like, one more scene. This is what scene, I took out of that. One more scene in there in which maybe the Ravagers were, I don't know... Oh, are they going to explain something through dialogue? You're going to complain because they explained it through dialogue? When they show up and actually do something visually, you're upset? Set up and pay off, Rich. <laughs> set up and motherfucking pay off. You set up with dialogue. You set up and a dialogue you, in the you first... You pay up with action, like, you, like they did in the movie. You set up a dialogue in the first five <laughs> minutes of the movie, and it doesn't pay off until the last two seconds? How about you? Usually we have like a, I don't know a reminder here and there. That no, that's sloppy. That's sloppy. <laughs> they had one line in the first five minutes of the movie, and way at the end, they go, ah, never mind. I guess he was all right. We got nothing else between them. So you hate Ghostbusters? For what? Don't cross the streams. That was literally set up with a line that happened in the early, you know, somewhere in the first act. That was a callback. That is different. Okay, okay. That was not a was... setup payoff moment. That was a callback. <laughs> oh, oh, Jack Trigger Joyce, thank you. Jack Trigger Joyce. Oh, 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 Rich. Yeah. Let's take a little moment. Let's take a little moment and talk about the power of music uh -huh. in a movie, right? Yeah. Music can help elevate a scene, don't you think? Like, like if, if it's about just tone of the music or maybe the lyrics of a song can help, can help take a normal the chain. scene. Huh? The chain. That's one of my, that is like one of my favorite scenes ever in like anything now, the end of that movie. Brandy. Can we talk about Brandy? Okay. So the song Brandy, you know, Brandy, you're a fine girl. What a good wife you'd be. But my life, my love, my lady is the sea, right? Yeah. It's just a song about someone who's, uh, who, who's, who's, uh, who's in love m more with their work than the lady. Yeah. 
Ego's using that to justify his actions. Right. And then instead of just letting the song play and letting the song speak for itself, I wouldn't have got it. Ego literally takes it lyric by lyric to help explain why the song is important uh, theming for the story. That's some kindergarten level shit, don't you think? You know what? I would I would have completely missed it. You might have. I would have completely missed it. But you know what? You might have watched it a second time and go, "Oh, the Brady thing! What a clever thing!" Instead, they just shove it right down your throat. So when Peter asks, you know, why'd you leave my mom? Ego's just gonna like turn that song on and walk out of the room. Or you just have that <laughs> song playing while Ego <laughs> talks about other stuff, and it could be it could be another level in the scene. Instead of instead of having Lego ego just say the lyrics oh, over and over again. Hold on, son. I think there's a, let me, a song on here. Uh, here you go. Hold on, wait, oh wait, I have to fast forward. I haven't used a cassette in a while. <laughs> I gotta go tend to the garden. Just just listen to the song. <laughs> or he could have been talking about other stuff while that song played in the background. You know, just normal stuff. It's just all bothersome. Show don't song, right? Can't get that. <laughs> oh, I like that Star Killer sixteen eighty three. I don't know why I left your mom. Bye, Brandy plays. <laughs> well, you, you know, like that. By the way, that time could have been could have been giving us more setup on his plan, right? That could have been him, like, kind of going through the nuts and bolts of his plan, and while... So, so you want him to explain the nuts and bolts well, of his plan. But see, why, why, I'm saying we could pull double duty here, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. While maybe we get some nuts and bolts of his plan, the song plays, and we are meant to infer that, you know, oh, he's, you know, he's too tied to his purpose and his work. So you want to get rid of the emotional stuff with the mother... And replace it with some expository dialogue based on the plot. The emotional stuff will still be there with the song. <laughs> I'm, I'm being an asshole. I know you're being an asshole. And, and you know I'm what? I'm sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. I don't mind because I don't mind because like I I know I'm right here. And again, I don't hate the movie. They did a lot of little things that were nitpicky and took me out of the movie which is why overall I was like I just didn't care for it I just didn't care for it no there's no way to re-edit Guardians to get around all this stuff there's no way to re-edit it there there was just like you just need to take out so much fucking dialogue talk about the Watchers and Adam Warlock the Watchers were in the movie and Adam Warlock was mentioned. They had very little impact on the movie itself. And I don't know who Adam Warlock is, so. He was the guy in the in the tube at the end, right? They were there. Yeah. Marvel Universe, Marvel Universe, this is expanded Marvel Universe. We, okay, so none he, of this has any real relevance to the film and why the film no, was Rich, good. We'll, t we'll talk. We'll talk about. We'll talk about Adam Warlock. <laughs> Uh, during one of the credit scenes, they showed a tube and they said there's a guy in it named Adam. <laughs> that's it. That's that's it. That's it. There's a guy named Adam in there. Oh, okay. There sure are going to be more Marvel movies. Yep. Didn't expect that. There's a tube. We got a tube. Don't worry. Don't worry. We got that tube. What? Who is Adam? Adam Warlock is irrelevant because he is uh, Thanos' primary foe, his primary opponent. Oh, okay. He plays a fairly big role in the Infinity Gauntlet. Ah. Ah. Oh, shit. The guys are back. Right. I remember how Zelda works. Get out of here. Get out of here. Talk about the Stan Lee scene? That was eh, cute. Fine, yeah, it was, it was cute. cute. It was cute. It was fun. It was funny that he mentioned like it was basically a meta scene where he was like, and then one time yeah. I was a FedEx driver. It's the same, it's the same Stan Lee. Stan Lee, we've seen in all of these movies. Yeah, it's funny. Thanks, thanks to his involvement with the Watchers, possibly even the ones that don't take place in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's, they've all been the same guy. Exactly. It's cute. That was a cute scene. Yeah. 
That was a fine scene. That was a fine, cute scene. Gun seems like a better fit for the Thanos story than the Russo brothers. I agree 100%. At this point, I think Thanos should just remain a Guardians of the Galaxy villain or character. Well, yeah, because then he can give a really nice speech. He, he, it's a better fit than the Avengers. Well, you can only assume the Guardians will be there. Yeah, here's the problem with that, though. Everyone's going to be there, and there are so many characters at this point, it's just going to be a clusterfuck. Infinity War is going to be a clusterfuck. Oh, mm -hmm. What they would need to do if they did it right was just essentially have Thanos be the protagonist. The protagonist? Yeah. Well, I guess you could do that. You focus on the little story, that, you know, him being God, wooing death, and death still not being interested in nothing. Nothing he does with all of his godlike powers can, can make Mistress Death love him. And he has the power to change her mind. He can just will it. But he actually does love Mistress Death. And he doesn't want to alter. There's a good story there. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. why I like Thanos. That's uh -huh. why I like the Infinity Gauntlet. And it doesn't have anything to do with a bunch of people in tights running around trying to stop him. I but wonder... they're not going to do that with the Infinity War because they want the, the spectacle where all the cats show up and everything blows up. Uh-huh. Yeah. Gotta have things blow up, Rich. Gotta have things blow up. Who that? All right. All right. Whoever the guy running Marvel is, he said that Thanos is basically the protagonist of Infinity War. Okay, oh. so maybe they will do it right. I will be delighted Kevin, if they do that right. Kevin Feige is a super fan, Rich. It's possible. It's possible, you know, because we're going to meet Death in Thor Ragnarok. But, right? That's who, that's, who, that's, that's who the villain is in Thor? Oh, wait, who is? Death. Oh, really? I think Hela, 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 right? Hela. Oh, Hela. I, I think that's somewhat different. Is that? Yeah. I don't know. I'm I... not 100% sure. I'm not that familiar with Thor comics. But I know Mistress Death is never called Hela anything. She's just Mistress Death. She just wears a robe. She doesn't have a fancy headdress. She's not the one with the horns on her head? No. Uh, Chat, what do you think? Hela will probably be the death of MCU. That's what I thought I read, is that Hela was going to be the mistress death. So so they're going to set her up. She's a death Hela hybrid, is what Chad is saying. Okay. Okay. But then she's acting like blatantly villainous, which shouldn't be right. Well, we don't know. We don't know what she's doing in Thor. Okay. 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 She's just dead. If she's just death, she's just doing her job, Rich. She's just doing her thing. Get off me! Fucking jellies. Ah! Classic, classic top-down Zelda combat right here, Rich. Yeah. That's all I do. That's all I do. It's great. It's great. <clears throat> what? So this probably... I'm gonna. I want. I don't want to split up the tips where I start reading them from the top and work down because it's just gonna be a mess where I miss a lot of things. So uh, after I get through a number of these, we're probably gonna suddenly start getting a lot of guardians questions. Sure. So it's gonna be a guardians lull now because I'm gonna go back to regular tips. Okay. Do it. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Um. Yeah. Come here, bet. bet. Anonymous says, Jack. I'm Jack. Stop trigger triggering us with your bullshit. And don't you dare buy the Chinese version of that cable. You will buy the moral American version <laughs> of the cable. By the way, there is no Chinese version of that cable. I looked because I would have <laughs> bought the cheaper Chinese version. There is not. Apparently, like, it's really specialized hardware that upscales. Um... No, so I, I will be I will be morally upstanding. If I can find it, you know, for under a hundred fucking dollars, which I won't be able to, so it just doesn't matter. Can I get out of here? No. There we go. There we go. Get out of here, bat! Get out of here, bat! Gobbledygook says, Ooh, I got Today, that. I got my Toshiba Nuon DVD player with Merlin Kart Racing and Freefall 3050 AD. What? An obscure console from 1999 with eight games. <laughs> Does anyone have an emulator for this thing? <laughs> I can't find a controller. 
Oh, I'm sorry. What? Shit, look at that thing. Okay. That's funny. Nanva says, Yeah. So if Jack finds a rare reel of film, and the only way he could watch it would be to convert it to digital, would that be morally great? Also, I now want a Jack and his family reality TV show. <laughs> Because my wife would be upset if I spent three hundred dollars. You spent three hundred dollars on a cable for the GameCube. That's yes. every, that's every family though. <laughs> like any, anyway, I would be upset if she spent three hundred dollars on I don't know shoes. <clears throat> now, what do women buy? I don't know. Uh, I didn't say that. What was the? <laughs> if they're comfortable shoes, I probably wouldn't mind. Uh, what do, what's, what was the first part of that question? Um, so if you found a rare reel of film. Mm -hmm. The only way you could watch it would be to convert it to a to to a digital. Would that be morally great? Well, if I found it, I owned it. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's you own you own your GameCube disc though, and you wouldn't play those on an emulator. In both, so, uh, so you wait, own the real so film. Wait, wait, wait. You own the real film. Yeah. And you own the, the DVD. Sure. Well, those are those are slightly different circumstances. Yeah, they are. Those are slightly different circumstances because a a film canister can be played off of many different things, right? Mm -hmm. There's no pro proprietary film reel unless we're talking about something like uh, the same thing's true of the emulator because they're not using the patented chips and whatnot they use in sure. the machine. Yeah. Like I said, the emulator is 100% legal. It's just a different way to watch it. Uh, you a know, different way to play it in the emulator's case. Sorry. I, I just I probably have to look into it. That's okay. A, that's a pretty ambiguous. Like the the question. Ha ha! Figured it out, Rich. I had to push thing. That question doesn't line up perfectly, but eh, I guess the answer is maybe. Okay. The answer is maybe. Like why? Well, like I guess why am I not watching it on a like a reel to reel? Like, I I just read the I just read the tip. So you would go out of your way to find an old reel to reel. Well, by the way, no matter I'm, what I'm just, I would, no matter what I would need a reel to reel to digitize it. Okay. Okay. If, yeah, if I were yeah. digitizing it, I would need a reel to reel anyway. So then why not just watch it like on a reel to reel with the screen? So I got a. Gasha seed, plant it in a patch of soft soil. <laughs> okay, you have a gasha seed. Apparently. Plant it in a patch of soil. Butt floss 21! Ha! <laughs> says Rich. Butt floss. As someone who never played Vanquish, what makes it better than an average third person shooter? Rocket boots. <laughs> you have rocket boots. Unlike most third person shooters, uh, you don't want to hide behind cover. I mean, you could, but you have rocket boots, and the, there's an emphasis on on movement and uh -huh. and navigating around, on on being aggressive and attacking rather than staying back and taking pot shots. Vanquish wants you to use your rocket boots to go behind enemy cover rather than to take cover while the enemy shoots at you. That's that's the key difference. So speed, rocket boots, and uh, aggression. So instead of emphasizing covering and popping up and shooting and covering yeah. and popping up and shooting, it emphasizes movement and be. Mm -hmm. It wants you to be the badass. It wants you to be the badass. Yeah. Definitely wants you to be the badass. Good. Do, 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 do. One small ball says, "Just check box. Just check box office mojo." Saw King Arthur made $45 million. Oh, yeah, I heard it bombed. Too bad those dipships spent $175 million making the movie. Did no one tell them about Lone Ranger and Ben-Hur? Well, you know, someone's trying to break the comic book superhero stranglehold. King Arthur? Yeah. I mean... It's not, it's not a superhero. It's a it's a legendary fairy tale nights and I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily consider that a comic book movie. Okay, no, I'm just trying to say somebody's trying to break that. 
stop the, the comic book movie stranglehold. Oh, by Obviously, just making some, another... By just making something that's oh, not a okay. comic sorry, book movie. Sorry, sorry. And I, spending I, a lot of money on it. I thought, I thought you were calling King Arthur a comic no, book movie. I was like, Rich! I'm saying it's not a comic book movie. Gotcha. And you know what? Give him credit for that. We're spending $175 million in something that isn't Marvel or DC. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I, I heard there were just so many problems with that movie just as a movie. So, Well, you can tell by looking at the trailer, but I'm, I'm sorry that's the case. Mm. I'm, sure there's, I'm, uh, I'm sure there's something I'm supposed to do. I just don't quite know. Oh, here we go. I don't think I've been in here before. What, what did Arthur do that, that that makes his story so compelling? He's famous for pulling a sword out of a stone and like dying. What did he what well, did he, he do did you that's read, significant? Did you ever read the Once and Future King? I did not. Okay. I'm not I'm I'm only I'm only for the record, yeah. I'm only vaguely familiar, and I'm not trying to criticize. I'm literally asking what the big deal is. Sure. Well, yeah, it's 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 ba it's basically Luke. Like he was destined for greatness. He goes on a training montage, and he's great. So he, he he united England. Okay, okay. Yeah. I did not know that. No, I did not know that. So yeah, it was. It's it, like uh, he's not Rocky. He's not the. He's not an underdog. Yeah, I'm like is there some, like some big dragon that he supposedly slayed or right. something. I just no. know. Now, he was a king. I know he was a king, but yeah. why is you know why was he? I, I just didn't know why he was significant. Yeah. I have bombs. <clears throat> I don't. Maybe I was supposed to use them over here. Ah, bats! Cap, 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 cap. My rom says, Rich, I wanted to thank you for selling me on Farscape. Halfway through the first season, and really loving the characters and scenarios, but seeing it reminds me that you need to watch Firefly. Ah! I know, I know, I need to watch Firefly, and uh, honestly, and all honesty, the only reason I have it is I just don't want my heart broken. It's, it's worth it. It's worth it, yeah, Rich. Yeah, it's all worth right. it. All there, right. There's some fine television in there. Get your heart broken. That's, that's literally the only reason I haven't watched it. Shit. Shit. Oh fuck! Someone's saying go left. Go left. Yes. Or die, whatever. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm figuring it out. Maybe. And um, since we're talking about Guardians earlier. Yeah, let's talk, let's talk if, more about Guardians. No, 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 just briefly. Okay. If you're a fan of Guardians, yeah. Farscape is essentially Guardians of the Galaxy, the TV series. <laughs> <laughs> Which would explain why Jack does not like Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's really true, by the way. My tastes are pretty consistent. Because <laughs> I also didn't much care for Farscape. Yeah, it, in a, in a lot of ways, it did Guardians before Guardian did Guardians. Only, only uh, Aaron Sun and John Crichton have better romantic chemistry than Gamora and Peter Quill. Right, there was that was another. Not that I not that I hate what they're doing with them, but and then, well, and it's like that was that was another thing that kind of went nowhere. That was another little plot point where it's just like, and I get like I guess it moved it moved an inch. But you know, and you, I know everyone's gonna be like, "But you, what do you want this to be? Normal, you know, like every other movie?" But it's like Peter's like, "Hey, Mama, let's get it on," and she's like, "Nope," and he's like, "You want to get it on?" And she's like, "No, I don't." And then at the end, she's like, "Well, maybe." <laughs> you know, that was it. That's what we get. Uh, on chat, I did not notice Ben Browder in Guardians. Ben Browder plays John Crichton in Farscape, supposedly. He has cameo in Guardians. I must have just completely freaking missed it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Who the heck was he? He was the gold general. All right, uh, next time, I will pay more attention to that. He was the gold general? Oh, well, that's fun. Okay. Okay. I will know what to look for next time. I Obviously, I... I just completely missed it. Oh, that's fun. That's fun. 
But yeah, that was another that was another thing. That whole that whole like I love you Gamora subplot I'm like shit didn't go anywhere. Didn't do anything. I, th I, th I, th I think the romance aspects are handled better in Farscape. Hmm. All right, guys, I went left, and there ain't nothing here. Oh, wait, I think I have a map. Ha-ha! You know what, guys? I have a <clears throat> map. That is great. <laughs> okay, where's... Two rooms over, I gotta go up. Not this one. Not this one. This one? Nope, next one. Dister says. Dister! Have you guys heard of Zelda Classic? It was a PC remake classic 2D Zelda designed to be easily modded. There are tons of custom games for it. Don't play it now, though. Wandering Souls should be next. Ah! I have heard about it. I've never even seen it, though, anywhere. Like, I don't even know what it looks like, but I I did hear about it ages ago. Ah, there it is. Look at that. Classic crack in the wall, Rich. Uh, I haven't heard about that. I have heard about uh, the, the guy who was remaking... Now go left. Well, I found it, people. Don't worry. I'm just reading the things. I found it. Oh, shit. Uh, I, I heard about the guy who was doing a, uh, a Breath of the Wild imagining of the original Zelda. So it, it oh fuck, it'd be like Breath of the that's Wild. That's something different, though. What? That that right, yeah. right. That's what I'm saying. That's something different. But uh, he's he's doing Breath of the Wild mechanics with a classic Z Zelda top-down 2D thing. Uh, he did get a takedown notice. Uh, and so instead of, God, God damn it! This is why you work on something like that quietly until it's done. Well, uh, in, instead he is doing the smart thing, which is just making an original game with original characters. Oh, okay, okay. But he got all the he got all the press for making the Zelda game, and yeah. now he can make his own thing. So no, the smart thing okay. is okay. to use the pre-existing characters, get a bunch of press, and then when Nintendo tells you no, make your own thing. So Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> yes, which started as <laughs> Twilight erotic fan fiction, if I know my Fifty Shades. <laughs> ah! <clears throat> get out of town! Oh, they're going to kill me. Yep. Shit. MLG Freeman says, I friggin' love Fallout. What are your thoughts on the series? Which is your fave? P.S. Love you guys and everything you do. Keep up the good work. Never, never played Fallout. What? You haven't played Fallout? Jack? Uh, back in the day, I, I tried playing a little bit of, um, what was it, 3? What was the one that came out... Not most recent, but the one before the most recent. The one before New Vegas. Okay. I tried playing it and didn't much get into it. I didn't like the whole... The whole bullet time, not bullet time thing. Uh, I, I didn't... I just could never figure out the whole shooting mechanic because it was a little turn-based and a little not turn-based. and I, 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 I could never wrap my head around it. And I didn't care about the world enough to learn it. So... Okay. Which is probably not the answer you're looking for because now you're like, what is fun? So it's like, I, I just never cared. I never cared about Fallout. I know I know people who dedicate their life to Fallout. Like, especially the new one with all of, like, the town management shit you can do in the new Fallout. Yeah. Like, that's it. 800,000 Some hours. people hate the new one? Uh, I, I didn't think it went over well. I, I honestly just don't know. God damn it, I hate these things. <clears throat> okay. Anonymous says, Hey, Reg. I showed a friend the Blade Runner 2049 trailer, then your audition, then the trailer again. I've never seen her laugh so hard. She said you broke Ryan Gosling for her. Ah! Good job. Nice, Rich. <laughs> Congratulations. Come here. Fairy, come here. God damn it. 
You just write down, just go around and get her. No, because there's more spiky things. <clears throat> Fucking hell. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> I should give this game a try. It's cute. Because I've never, I've never really been a handheld person with right. handhelds. I've never played these. Oh. And I've never played the Minish Cap. Minish Cap is cute. It's just cute. Is it good? Is it just cute? I like it. Yeah. Like it's cute. Like this is cute. They're, they're cute. You yeah. Know. Uh, yeah. I like them. I like them both. They're, they're more reminiscent of classic Zelda, which is, yeah. you know, like, simple combat and uh, focus on puzzles. And, 2D. You know. Exactly. If I know you're a big fan of Link to the Past. Yeah, I it, love Link to the if Past. If you love Link to the Past, the handhelds are where it's at. I, I would imagine. I just, I usually don't even have a handheld. Exactly, you know? yeah, yeah. Like... Yeah, I'm with you. Oh, look at, oh, look at this. Classic! It's like I'm playing the Binding of Isaac up in here. Or it's like you're playing the Zelda game. I know. That was, that was the joke. Okay. Okay. Oh, I have 20 ember seeds. Oh, we need those. I know where I can use those. I know what to do. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm, a bomb. I picked up a bomb on accident. You know what? I started uh, Link Between Worlds on 3DS and never finished it, and I have no good reason why I've never finished it. Because I remember you said you loved it. I was having a really good time playing it. Something else just came up? I'm sure, Well, you know, we, yeah, we have to play yeah. a game, and then it's like, well, there's 60 hours into playing a game, right? I'm willing to pay it, play it, but uh, I would have to pry the 3DS out of Karen's cold, dead hand. I have to pry <laughs> I know. What is she? She's obsessed. Animal, animal Crossing. She's obsessed with Animal Crossing. She wants to show up next stream. She wants to play Animal Crossing? On I don't know if she wants to play Animal Crossing, but she wants to show up and hang out next Oh, stream. yeah, yeah. It's been a while. She's off on a Thursday, which means she can hang out Wednesday night. Oh, cool. So. That would be great. She can tell us all about Animal Crossing. <laughs> she can tell us all about Animal Crossing, yes. <laughs> no, I know what to do now. Now, see, right over... Ah, see, over here are these two things that need to be uh, lit up. Oh, shit. You know, it was originally my 3DS. We, we bought it because we're going to talk about... Uh, uh, Zelda. Ocarina. O we're, we're talking to talk about Ocarina. And we said, Ocarina, oh, well, you know, we can play we can play Ocarina, yeah. and, uh, and you know, that's an excuse to get you a 3DS. Yeah, so I, you know, I have a 3DS. It was my 3DS. Yeah. My, my 3DS. Now it's got, like, like cute fox stickers on it and little flowers. She put stickers, stickers, she put stickers on it? She's got stickers on my, my 3DS. Oh, I'm so sorry, Rich. <laughs> oh, she is, she is, she is uh, taking it over. <laughs> How do we... There it is. Okay. So now this... Nope, nope. There we go. And... Nope. And... Nonsense in the back. There we go. Hi, Rich. Oh, hi, both. Hi, both. Rich, did you read any more of the Magic 2.0 books after The Wizard is book one? And if so, did you enjoy? Book four just came out. Thanks both for book Rex before. Great stream. I haven't read the third or the fourth. I read the second one, and I really liked it. I haven't got around to reading the third and the fourth, but uh, I like the second one a lot. Is Karen a furry? No, she just really loves dogs. Anytime she sees a dog, the world just stops, and she goes over, Oh, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, Rich. She could be in the middle of talking to somebody about like a, a, a kidney transplant that yeah. she needs. Like, well, your kidney... A dog. Somebody could walk by with a dog and be, "Oh, how you doing?" Oh, yeah. like Ka like, and Karen needs the kidney. <laughs> Karen needs a kidney, and she almost has someone convinced to give her a kidney. And then, oh, dog! Oh, dog! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's very much a dog person. Oh, I'm so sorry, Rich. Sari Chen says, adding fuel to the fire. Yeah. It's explicitly stated in Wind Waker and Twilight Princess where they are. Yes, the rest is shoehorned and BS, but those two games are pretty solid. Yeah, that's true. And, and Wind Waker specifically mentions the hero of time. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay. That was bad. Oh, oh, the hand. Do we need eight timelines? No, no. 
Do we need to, to elaborate on these things? No, we do not. Oh, fuck. Oh, fa oh, the, oh, the creepy hands. I always hated those hands. Oh, no. We don't need the eight timelines. In fact, like, the fact that there are three different timelines in and of itself invalidates all the timelines. Well, the like, nothing matters. All right. The, the Legend of Zelda, the Legend of Zelda, it doesn't need to be the same story retold. It could be like Arthurian myths, where there's more than one King Arthur adventure and story. Right. But there's some details that don't always add up, like Excalibur, Jack. Yeah. Was Ex was Excalibur the sword he pulled out of the stone, or was Excalibur handed to him by a lady in the lake? And, you know, what's better for Arthurian legend? Is it a myth? Well, well the truth we all, could be either or. You know, you mix and match. Oh, we don't really know. It adds to the mystery. Or, well, there's timeline A where he receives the sword from the stone, but there was a split in the timeline earlier. And in that timeline, he got the sword from the lake. Which one is more evocative of, of fantasy and adventure and myth? That's my point. I'm with you. That's my point. I'm with you, Rich. I can be with you. Boop, boop. All right, I'm full of hearts. We got a boss here, Rich. We ready? Mm -hmm. Let's do this! Oh, look at this! Look at this cute little unicorn dragon! Ah! Oh, I probably gotta bomb him. Like, I know there's one Arthurian story where there's two different stories. They're effectively the same story, only in one version it's Sir Lancelot, and the other version it's uh, one of the other knights, like Galahad. Uh -huh. But it's it's, it's it's the same freaking story, like, almost exactly. Myth and legend, myth and legend. Not alternate timelines, myth and legend. We don't know. Depends on who's telling the story. Ooh. <clears throat> oh, there we go. I figured it out. I figured it out. Got to hit him in the horn. Hit him in the unicorn horn. He shoots up. He shoots up, by the way. Shit, I'm gonna die. Oh, he died. Okay, that's alright. We figured it out. We figured it out. That's what we use. We figured it out. Use the sword on the horn. And Chad, I, I know about this. I read a little about about uh, Arthurian legend recently. Because, because of Zelda and timelines and, well... How do, you know, real myths and legend handle this kind of continuity type stuff? Oh. So I looked into it a very little bit. Where I'm, I'm definitely not saying I'm an expert. Because like I said, I didn't even know what the big deal, like what did he do that was important. So, somebody's saying, fun fact about Excalibur. Okay. The scabbard was actually way more powerful and useful than the sword. The scabbard? The scabbard. If you have the scabbard, you cannot bleed to death. You'll get wounded, but you will not bleed. The sword is just unbreakable. Or at least very hard to break. Ooh, that's neat. But it's actually the scabbard that is magic. I'm going to ask maybe a dumb question. The scabbard is the thing you put the sword in. That's not a sheath? I think that's just a different name for the same thing. I don't know what... They're both things you put the sword in. If there's a technical difference that's a, between a scabbard and a sheath, I don't know. I'm actually kind of curious what the technical difference between a scabbard and a sheath is. Or even is there one? Right. <clears throat> They're saying either or. Jack, fill your my. Uh, I'll fill my. There's there's bushes. There's bushes by the. Uh, I made a mistake of not fighting the hands. I thought I could rush to the boss, but I gotta fight the hands. Sheath is generally for knives. Scabbard is for swords. Oh, Somebody okay. is saying. That's okay. That's good to know. Technical different differences. Got your number hand. Get out of here. Sheathing. Is an action, someone is saying, to sheath something. Okay. So you would sheath it in your scabbard? Oh, fuck you, hand! That, that makes a fair amount of sense. I don't know. I don't know. Scabbard is just a subcategory of sheath. We're getting a lot of conflicting information, <laughs> chat. What I guess what I was hoping, chat, is for someone to look it up. <laughs> None of us says. Yeah. Since you like the Zeldas. I do like the Zeldas. Do you know Alundra? Decent PS1 era Zelda knockoff where you go into nightmares to beat them up. Some Ooh. bosses look kind of bloodborne, e.g. the Soul Leech boss, Body My Horror. I have never heard of it. It's a PS1 game? 
uh, PS1 era. They didn't necessarily say PS1 game, they say PS1 era. Alundra. A L U N D R A. Well, Jack is writing that down. Yeah, write that down. That sounds interesting. So, Sari Chen says, I forgot. Have you played Minish Cap? At least on the Wii U eShop, you can use your capture card. It's pretty good, too, apparently, and feels like a proper sequel to Link to the Past gameplay-wise. Um, yeah, I, I have not. I should. Yeah, no, and I actually I, I actually still... Uh, I found when, when I was busting out all my old Zeldas... I didn't have all the Zeldas, but when I found... Uh, when I found Wind Waker Minish Cap, my G GBA Minish Camp from when it first came out was still there. So I still have Minish Cap. Okay. Oh, my save file with all those hearts. Oh, that was nice to see. <laughs> oh, all those hearts, Rich. <laughs> mm. Mokey B85. Mokey. My two cents. Show okay. not tell. Oh, we're getting into the Guardians questions. Great. No, no, no. This is good. This is good, Rich. Show not tell is great. Yeah. Stronger filmmaking when used correctly. The downside. How would Peter know the backstory of Ego without being told? He can't see the flashback like we could. Uh, Ego is a god. You can you can write him to see the flashback or like I like we well, were talking about earlier. To get around that, a lot of times like somebody'll start telling the story and then you do the, the wavy sure. do 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 which would also fit into the kind of the stylistic theme, but but also as we were saying, perhaps the 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 backstory could be peppered throughout when they were kind how, of searching for how, the truth. How do you film a disembodied floating brain? Who just, how do you how do you visually illustrate? Well, I want to see if there's more life in the universe because hypothetically there should be life somewhere. It's just a brain floating there. <laughs> how do you demonstrate this? That's that's a really good question, Rich. <laughs> that is a really good question. And you know what? I'm not a filmmaker. I am not James Gunn. I don't have the answers to that question. Sometimes people need to talk. Uh, the show don't tell isn't saying no dialogue ever. It's saying use it sparingly. Sparingly. All right, come here. I got you. I got your number now, Dino. Dino. Whoa, what? You do something different now. Uh huh. <clears throat> Come here, you fuck. Some blue guy in chat says, weirdly enough, I also didn't like Geo 2 Guardians of the Galaxy 2 ah. as much as 1, but for a different reason. Oh. Most of the jokes just didn't land for me. They were either overly juvenile or completely incongruous to the scene. That's, that that's gun style. Like Gunn I, loves to under, undercut his big emotional, and like to me that that all felt like, fuck, uh, that all felt very like disingenuous. It was almost as if he was making fun of the movie that he was making. Yeah. It's like it's, it's like, dude, just make the movie. Oh now, oh now you're doing it, you dickhead. These characters do jokes. I'm fine with it. I found the. I mean, this is a matter of. The, Opinion. I can't say you were wrong to not find them funny. They didn't right. land for you. They, they landed for me. And right, just, right. We, you know, it worked differently for us. And it's but. okay that people have different opinions on us. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was, I was laughing at them jokes. Some of them. Some of them I really were. I, I loved, uh, uh, I mean, that, the, basically the whole taser face section was wonderful. Even even though I hate I didn't laugh at that so much. Here here's here's what I hate. I hate Rocket's over exaggerated fake laugh. He does it all the time. Bradley Cooper does the voice of Rocket. Okay. Every time Rocket does his like big belly laugh, I hate it. Well it wasn't a genuine laugh from the character though. He it, was fucking with Taserface. I, that's just how he always seems to laugh, and I, ha I always hate it. But but I like I didn't feel like Rocket's performance made me laugh, but just the idea of Taserface, I loved. I loved that whole Taserface thing. Ooh, 